Welcome to Whitlock Garage, where we're united by trucks. Today, we're going to be showing you how to C-notch your 63 to 72 C10 to get that clearance that you need. Alright guys, so you know how when you lower the rear of your C10, 6 inches or more, sometimes it's 5 inches, that you end up with a little bit of frame to axle contact. Well, that's exactly what's happening on Teddy. So today, we're going to fix that. We're going to be installing a CPP notch and we got some of the usual suspects here helping us, Ron, Rick and John. So we're going to pull Teddy out of the garage and we'll show you what we're working with here in just a minute. Ron's already got the hubcaps off the wheels, we're about to jack this rear end up pull both wheels and tires off, put it on jack stands because safety first. Then we'll get you an angle under the truck, show you exactly what we're going to be, what we're going to be cutting on and uh, we're going to get this bad boy notched. Y'all hang tight. Alright guys, so we're getting the truck ready to put the notch in. There's John, he's here. There's the main man Ron. He's gonna be on the on the grinder today with a cutoff wheel. Looks like he's doing a little studying. There's Pecos in the background. Much better look at him later. But Ron's got a little message he wants to he wants to tell y'all. Instructions. You don't need those. You don't need those instructions. No. Tech tip one on one. This trash. <laughs> now we're ready to go. <laughs> All right, so y'all know we practice safety, but you got to give a man the room to work a grinder the way he wants to work it. Speaking of safety, Harbor Freight TIG welding gloves. Yeah. I love these things. We'll link those down below. Face mask. Got to have that. Ready to go. Got to have that. Can't afford to mess up this pretty face. Yeah, I mean, look at this thing. I wouldn't get that close. Oh, it's just a beautiful mug. All right. So I got the box open up. As I fall over some tools down here. What we got in here, Ron? Uh, got some bolts. Look to be grade eight. Got some smaller bump stops. May use those, may not. Got some lock, got some lock nuts in here. Probably four of those. See what we got right there, Ron. Oh, looks like we got a nice little CPP notch. Put that thing over this. There we go. So you can see right there. It's about the amount we're going to be going up into the frame. So then the axle will have a little more travel there. Nothing new. Totally a normal thing when it comes to uh, lowering a 63 to 72 C10. But that's a CPP notch, so we know we may have to grind out a rivet or two, but we're going to be drilling some holes in the frame. I think we use one as an existing, or there's already an existing hole in the frame. Part number for the notch there, 6372 CNK. You ready for this buddy? I love cutting stuff up. We're gonna notch right in here. So basically clearance the frame a couple of inches up. Obviously we won't be going all the way to the top. We're gonna be clearancing the frame enough for the axle to have a little bit more travel there. Now on the other side of this side of the frame are some fuel lines that we're gonna have to have to deal with. So I'm going to crawl under here in just a minute, sort that out, and then we'll get started doing a little cutting. That sound good to y'all? Hey, where's Rick? Who knows? He's man. slacking. Slacking. Man, slacking. All right, so what we're doing here is tracing the notch on the in the notch so we can place it on the frame, make a mark on the frame to see exactly where we're going to be cutting. Ron's got an awful scientific me method. There we go. Nothing real scientific. All right, so that's what we're looking at right there. So he's going to cut that template out there. Then we're going to pull 
this coil spring out because we're gonna have to trim that plate right there that it connects to. And you can already see that somebody's chopped a hole in this frame at some point. It was not us. They were using it to get to the top of the coil spring. So if you're wondering what all this noise is in the background, it's these two over here playing ball. Are you waving at the camera, sweet girl? Yeah. Me and Mama are blowing the ball and playing pitch and doing the okay. batting so it, Let's see if you can hit this thing. Whoa, that was a big old miss right there. So we can get this lined up properly. We're gonna pull that coil spring and the shock so we can jack the axle up and really get a good idea of where this is gonna hit on the frame. We might be taking a few extra steps, but we wanna make sure we get it right. And that little bump stop bracket right there, it's gonna have to come off too. And it's got rivets in it and they suck, but we're gonna handle it. Welcome to Japanese Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, what you should have done was those rubber things that you put air in them and they go up and down. You should have bought some of those and put them in while you're back here. Like a, a gas shot? Air shot? Airbag. That's an airbag. <laughs> oh, well. And there's a spring. I guess on the inside of the frame rail, right in there we had these little clips holding some an flexible fuel lines and part of the wiring harness we weren't able to show you us getting those out because it was just a complete pain but you can see we just stuck a zip tie on that one there so i'm just going to cut it real quick slide back under there move some lines out of the way and we're gonna get started with cutting the notch in if you don't have a plumb bob or anything like that to mark the center line, what I'd like to do anyways is I'd jack it up. You can take the top of your pin, set it on top of the axle. That is your center line of the axle where it's going to come up touch the frame. Yep. So when you look at your notch where that bump stop is, you want to make sure that bump stop hole meets that right there when you go to do it all. That way there you know the axle is totally in the center of your notch. Money, money. Money, money. <laughs> By the way, I'm also taking donations for my truck. If anybody decides they want to donate some money, money. What, for Pecos? Pecos, yeah, man. Hey, LS swaps ain't cheap. Yeah, Pecos don't need a dime. All right, so we're about to hook Ron up with the GoPro on his safety shield. You know, we said safety first. So, this is what we're doing to bring y'all that, that cutting angle. Heck yeah. So Ron's been in here working on the side of the frame, so we had to get this bump stop bracket off. You can see there, he's got the rivets all punched out. Up next, a little cutting. Well, let's just make sure we got our, our center where we want to be. You tell me when. We got John jacking up the rear end so we can make sure we're gonna be in the right spot. As you can see, on this side, we still got the bump stop bracket. On this side, we do not. Should be good right there, John. And you can see, Ron's about to mark off his template here. He's checking that center line to make sure that the axle is going to seat properly if it ever does slide all the way up in the notch, which it could, or it probably won't, but with that fuel extra. 19 gallons of fuel from the Boyd tank there. There's a, lot, a little more extra weight over the rear end than normal. When I start to cut, I'm probably actually gonna like just trim up in here first. And then we'll grind out. And then and that way there, I'll have room to actually set the notch in there. Okay. Kind of roughly. Cause if I take too much, I can't, right, put, it, can't, can't put, put it back. Put it back. Yep. So. Cool. I dig it. Basically your spring is gonna bolt up through your notch on these trucks. So you gotta take this spring plate from the factory out and you can do it one of two ways. If you have And that's where the spring connects the spring, to the bottom of the frame rail yeah. and goes up through. Okay. And you can do it one of two ways. You can if you have the bed off, you could take the whole thing out. There's two rivets on the back side of this. Yeah. Uh, and then there's two rivets right here. You could drop the whole plate out. 
or if you have the bed on you can actually trim along the back of the rail yeah. and just basically take out this lower piece of it okay that way there and you'd keep some rigidity on the back side with that plate okay. still being once you take this plate out you're just this plate replaces that plate so then you bolt the spring retainer to the mm -hmm. bottom of the notch the bottom of the notch and then obviously that's on the frame yeah cool let's do it All right, so Ryan's gonna go on with some pilot holes. Put a little WD-40 on the bit. Keeps it cool, keeps it cutting. Easy. Nailed it. All right, Ron, so what are we what are we drilling that hole for? So if you look at the notch. Show us this notch. If you look at the notch again, so you gotta, basically you'd have an angle and an angle. So if you got a notch, notch like that if i cut with the angle grinder and i i cut this i'm probably going to end up up here mm -hmm. and up here or out here and out here to cut it well if i drill this corner an arch is stronger than anything else so basically if i cut here and i cut here okay. i won't be way out here and this arch actually makes the rail stronger because i don't have two pieces cut that are cut, cut past each other that are cut past each other yep makes perfect sense Ron, what did you do to my truck? Made it way cooler. Yeah. That's daylight on the other side. Put that bad boy up there and let's see if we're anywhere probably, close. It's probably going to be not enough, but... That's a good place that, to start. It's okay to have for your first one. For yeah, your like you said, one. cutting less mm -hmm. is better than cutting more mm -hmm. at this point. So, I mean, I could probably, and see where I cut and drill my hole, I could probably go over here a little bit, probably go over here a little bit, and that'd be all right. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. So, let's do that. Let's do that. So, Ron's been working on shaping the frame rail where we cut it out. He's got, he set the notch in. We're actually coming up with the axle now just to sort of test the fitment. We want to make sure that that axle can seat all the way up in that notch. There it goes. On the other side, right? right there, John. Center, center. Let's call it. Got it in place here. Just hold, held on with some clamps. Next thing we're going to do is put the hardware in. So we got this grade eight hardware here. Again, this is a CPP notch. I'll link it down in the in the description. But we have drilled the first hole there. So. Hardware is going to look like that all the way across. We got the spring pocket. We're actually probably going to have to give that a little bit of love right there. I'm going to double check this while we're looking. Nope, that's going to go right in, which is sweet. All right. So we're going to get this bolted up, drill some holes. We'll see you back in a minute. Oh. 
Hope you enjoyed that install, the C notch on Teddy. I've already gone in, gotten cleaned up, come back out. We know that it's gonna make a really big improvement on the drivability of this truck. It's gonna ride a lot better. Frame won't be contacting the axle, so we're really excited about that. Special thanks to Ron and John and Rick. Ron in particular, because he did a lot of the heavy lifting with the grinding, etc. So special thanks to Ron, Two Trucks Ron, of course Rick Cheeseman, Square Body C10, S-Q-U-R-B-D-Y-C-10, and John Paget, J Paget 3005 on Instagram. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Give us a thumbs up. If you like the video, you can do that by smashing the thumbs up right below the screen. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think about the install of Teddy. It's a little more work than, you know, some of your bolt-on stuff. There's a lot of grinding and cutting, punching out rivets, etc. But it's worth it. And at the end of the day, you can do it in your driveway just like we did with a couple of friends. So thanks for tuning into Whitlock Garage. We'll catch you next time. Cue the music.